Robert Frost's poem, Nothing Gold Can Stay, is incredibly short, and it explains that the first green that appears in spring is so pale it appears as gold, but nature can't sustain this color. Soon, the leaf darkens and the gold disappears. In the same way, the golden dawn soon loses its magical light, becoming mere day. Nature, the speaker concludes, simply cannot hold on to its golden moments. They quickly fade. This is the entire poem. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaps a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. Nothing Gold Can Stay was published in the collection New Hampshire in 1923. The poem operates on a kind of downward spiral, telling a story of fading and using the language of falling. In it, leaf subsides, Eden sank, and dawn goes down. Then, leaf subsides to leaf in a natural progression when, through the action of photosynthesis, leaves turn from gold to green. Subsides suggests settling down or diminishing, but the words Eden sank include a more interesting verb choice, sank. However, it aligns metrically with subsides of line five and makes sense here in describing how Adam and Eve left the Garden of Eden in the biblical book of Genesis. After all, the story of the human's exile from the garden is often described as the fall of man. Gold, then, is the precious, fleeting manifestation of a treasured perfection. We value its beauty, at least in part, because it's so brief and so rare, as is the human life. The conclusion? Nothing gold can stay. The fleeting nature of beauty was a popular theme of the Romantic poets of the late 18th and 19th century. But New Hampshire was published in 1923, only a few years after the end of World War I, whose death toll and massive destruction was still fresh in the minds of Frost and his contemporaries.